Hi, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, and thank you to the organizers. XTOVHI is really built around using AWS to reduce risk in drug development by running computational chemistry on the cloud. And we're really excited to share what we've done with other cloud enthusiasts and life science enthusiasts. So drug discovery and development has a very low success rate. Many candidates start the drug de development process, but these are gradually filtered out as they fail more and more tests until eventually, after 10 to 15 years, one or often no drugs actually make it to market because at all of these different levels, like discovery, compound optimization, or especially the clinical trials, drug candidates are found to not be beneficial or to even be potentially toxic to humans. And so we at Extompi, and actually, most computational chemists for the last 30 years to maybe even longer before then have wanted to use computational chemistry to reduce risk in drug development. And at Extolipi, we are building molecular modeling platforms, add new toxicity prediction platforms, and crystal structure predictions platforms on the cloud, which we're using to help reduce risk so that more of these candidates will actually be successful in the next steps of their trials. And today I'm going to talk about crystal structure prediction because that is just this incredibly complex analysis that would not be possible without the cloud in the way um, we've done it. So what is crystal structure prediction and why is it relevant to pharmaceuticals? The small molecules that are in the drugs that we use, for example, acetaminophen, which is inside Tylenol, are packed into crystal structures, which are then put in a powder form into the tablets that we consume. And so this is the nanoscopic depiction of this molecule in its crystal form. And then this is what you can see if you look under a microscope. And so if a small molecule only had one crystal form, for drug development, it actually wouldn't be super necessary to know this, because you just really want to see how the molecule works in the body and if it does the right thing. But small molecules can actually form multiple crystals, just like carbon can form either graphite or diamond. Any small molecule can form a number of different crystals that all have different chemical and physical properties which affect how the drug enters our body and how long it then functions in the body. And so, for example, this Okay, the green molecule might um, be stable for like six or 20 years in your closet and you could still take it and in two minutes your headache would be gone. Whereas this pink molecule might actually have to be refrigerated to be kept in a useful form and then might not even work. Like it might take six months to work because the crystal is so stable the drug never actually releases into your body. And so drug developers need to know that they're working with a form of the molecule that's actually going to go into the body. And importantly, any forms of these will transition to the lowest energy form. And so all drug development and clinical trials need to take place on the lowest energy form because that's the form that will eventually enter your body because any other molecular crystal form will convert under certain temperatures or pressures or just randomly over time to the lowest energy form. And if this conversion happens after clinical trials or after the drug's already on the market, it can have major consequences for the drug. For example, ritanavir in 1996 was the very first drug on the market, or one of the very first, for HIV. And it was really great, and it extended the lifespan and the health span of HIV patients like to a much, much better point. And so after the 90s, HIV, at least in Certain countries wasn't as much of a death sentence. But unfortunately, in 1998, a more stable form of the molecule appeared that pharmaceuticals had, developers hadn't recognized when they released the drug in 1996. And all of a sudden, this more stable drug was the only form that could be made because like a ripple effect, if one crystal converted, all the other crystals near it in the manufacturing site would also convert to this more stable form, and there were no other Form 1s. And Form 1 was very effective as an HIV medicine. Form 2 didn't help patients at all. So it was a major disaster, but fortunately for patients, you could still get the molecule through a liquid dosage. And so I don't think 
anybody died, but it was um, just a real disaster because they had to keep the molecule in a liquid form. They were actually putting it in little plastic tablets to swallow it because it tasted so bad. It was not what Abbott had hoped to achieve. And um, it took five years, at least, of scientists looking to find a new way to manufacture this drug. And in that time, they actually found five more crystal forms of ritanavir that they really should have been able to know about ahead of time, but you just couldn't know. So after that, um, pharmaceutical companies and also regulatory agencies started taking um, crystal form way more seriously and required um, long experimental tests to find all of the different crystals. And experimentally, you can do many different tests to try to make all these different forms, but you actually never will know that you found them all because there's just no way to know if like after three months you find a form and then after a year you find another form, there's always this risk that a more stable form will appear. And a scientist said in 19, 65, that the number of crystal forms is really directly proportional to the number of work that had gone into looking for them, which was very scary because that meant any drug on the market could one day just convert to a more stable form. But with computers, that's actually not true anymore because with a computer, you can calculate all of the different forms. So if you have a small molecule that has like for this example, there's one flexible bond and two flexible rings. You can rotate the molecule around into every possible form of those and calculate the energies of all of those possible forms. Um, this is a relatively small case, so there's just one flexible bond and two flexible rings. So if you rotate the bond by every degree, that's 360, and then you've got the two rings, so you have maybe one or 2,000 forms, and they can form different structures in the molecule, but it's computationally not the hugest problem, but most drugs actually have way more degrees of freedom, and so instead of looking at a couple thousand pictures here, you're looking at a couple billion. Um, and then once you've found all the different possible structures, you still have to rank them according to energy by doing very high-level quantum mechanics calculations, which are very time-consuming. And up until really the cloud, um, these would run on traditional clusters and would take months and months and months, and you could find the crystal structure landscape for very small drug-like molecules, but for most of the drugs going into pharmaceutical development, they really didn't have a solution, and Extelpi wanted to solve that. So we developed a platform where we take a given molecule and we train a very customized model to predict all of the potential structures of that molecule. And then we filter out redundant structures, and we optimize all of their energies and find the relevant lower energy states. And then we iterate over this again and again and again until the final set of low energy states that we can return to customers is the same. And we actually then take these and we simulate them across different temperatures so that pharmaceutical manufacturers will know how their drug will behave um, at pharmaceutically relevant temperatures instead of um, like what we could do with less computational ability is only look at zero Kelvin, which is really cold and not as useful. And to make this work, we've used a mixture of very accurate physics, artificial intelligence, and cloud computing. Artificial intelligence is especially important here for the ranking because it re ranking is 70% of what we spend our computational time on. And using our AI model, we've been able to reduce that significantly to the point where we can look at many more structures because we're doing fewer of these expensive quantum mechanics calculations. And the cloud is actually the most important because it's what allows us to generate billions of structures instead of just hundreds of thousands or millions. Um, and so the cloud lets us look at ever, ever larger structures. And we've implemented this from the beginning on AWS's cloud system, um, so specifically, we use S3 buckets to create a lake of all of the possible crystal structures. And we store the structural data in the S3 buckets, and the RDS is used to store workflow and methods information. And then we use an SQS queue to power the pipeline from generating crystals 
through the ranking, and in the queue, we're really only storing the structural IDs and not any of the structural information. That stays in the S3 bucket, so there's limited time wasted moving things around. Um, in the clustering, we use ECS, which is a Docker orchestration system, and it's built into Amazon and has given us really a very nice ability to scale up to huge systems. And then what's very important to us is the optimizing energies, which requires quantum mechanic calculations, is very, very expensive and time consuming. We're using EKS4, which is another Docker orchestration system, but built onto Kubernetes, which gives us more control over how we auto scale the spot instances. And spot instances are much cheaper, but you have to, it's a little riskier how to get them. And EKS has let us use spot instances for 90% of our computations, which really brings down the cost and allows us to kind of balance cost and time. And this is very important to our customers because some of our customers want to get things done very quickly, whereas others of our customers can wait a little longer. And so for customers who want our standard method, a relatively simple molecule would take about two days to generate the initial model, two more days to generate all the crystals, and then seven days, even with our AI model, to actually optimize all of the energies. And so for a total of 11 days. Um, and this data is back from 2018, and we published it together with Pfizer, who were our very first customers, and we're really happy that we have them as a customer and that they also collaborate with us on interesting projects. Um, and if a customer really needs to know the data soon, they can say that they don't want to wait for the cheapest spot instances. They can move things a little faster. And so we can move from 150,000 maximum nodes per day to 300,000 nodes per day and cut down the time for this by half. But importantly, even if people had to wait three months only doing 20 nodes a day, they would still know all of the crystal structures, which is way more than they could have done experimentally. And so it's, the cloud has made this possible to generate all of these. Um, and another thing that's really great about the cloud is that there's no wait time. If we had only one cluster, we'd be able to handle one molecular system at a time and maybe wait six months with the computing power of that traditional cluster. Instead, we can handle different complicated systems in just weeks to months, and we can do them all for all of our customers on the cloud at the same time. And so there's no queue time, which is really great. And what's great for us is that we can keep a couple um, cloud instances for ourselves to do research and development as we go. And that's really nice because then the client customers are always getting the latest technology without us having to take six months off to do R&D and then come back. So we're just always developing and improving our methods, which is really nice. And other benefits for us are that it's very scalable. Unlike a traditional cluster, we're only paying for what we're using. Um, we can optimize speed against cost, as I said, just for our customers, but we also do that for internal projects. Um, we never, ever invest in outdated hardware. It's very important. Um, we don't have to worry about buying a cluster and then feeling like we need to use it when something better comes along. Um, we can experiment with the newest hardware. So our clustering currently, we are using CPUs for the clustering because the SQSQ allows us to stream the generation and clustering and so we don't actually lose any time and so we're not worried about time. But we could cluster after generating them and then time would be an issue and AWS has recently released new GPU available nodes and we're considering trying those out and seeing is that worth the extra cost. And we can do that without any major um, commitments to anything because it's just like renting. And um, we just have very little queue time, which is really practical for all of the developers that we don't have to ever wait to run any analyses. And very importantly, AWS is greener than having our own cluster and we really like that because um, we want to save the environment and make people healthier. So that is how Extalfi 
is using AWS to really power our crystal structure prediction. We also have very interesting um, work going on right now for molecular modeling and ADME talks, and we'd be happy to tell you more about those afterwards, or you can email us. I'm Virginia at xtalpi.com, and this is my colleague Ryu at xtalpi.com, R-U-Y-U. And um, we are really excited that computational chemistry is moving um, so quickly thanks to the cloud in reducing the risk in drug development. We have several cases we're working on that I can't tell you too much about because they're for customers, but they really have a good chance of actually helping patients. And that was back in 1981, a huge dream of computational chemistry. And thanks to computer-aided drug design, it had come alive in some ways, but it's now really beginning to be able to make a much, much bigger impact. And along with um, many other companies springing up in the Boston area and all around the world, more and more people are moving to the cloud, and we're excited to share some of the insight and tricks we've learned with other people as the community grows and develops, because we always want to, our slogan is better lives, um, for better science for better lives, and we just want to bring everybody there. So thank you very much.